What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? I'm Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode, episode eight of No Labels Necessary, where we talk music, business, branding, and all that good stuff. New folks, new folks. If y'all do not know anything about us, just to give y'all a little context, I'm co-founder, Corey's co-founder of Contra Brand Agency, music marketing agency. So we help artists grow to work for the major labels, all that good stuff, just so you can get a feel for who we are. But let's get to the real because we got a lot of dope topics today. Hopefully the audio's good. You know, shout out to y'all who's helped us along the way. I think we are a few episodes in at this point of, of some decent audio. Um, and... <laughs> And look, we we we're on Thanksgiving week. You know what I'm saying? This is Thanksgiving week. So the episode might be a little bit shorter. Things are busy, but hopefully y'all enjoy y'all families this week. Y'all chill. If y'all don't have no family, hopefully, you know, you get some sleep. You know. <laughs> hopefully you get some sleep. And Jacory, I know you don't really like going home. Are, no, are you man, going home? I mean, yeah, I'm going home, man. It's right you down the street. Home? Why not? You know, uh, why not? I'm sure they miss me. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna go ahead to those ten houses? Yeah, bro. Every every year it's at least at least seven for real, like that us. At least seven <laughs> houses. Cause I don't. I mean, you know, I don't know how to explain it. They're they're down the street, but my family doesn't like coming to the city, so I have to go back to the country and then just hit hit every <laughs> block. But it's cool because then I'm fed for like two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so I don't really stress about it. That, that, that's the game, bro. It's that's like a sampler from every house. Like, oh, this <laughs> smack and cheese was cool, but the, the dressing was a little dry, but they got the great dressing, started mixing, matching plates. I mean, you got the perfect <laughs> setup, bro. Like, so I ain't mad at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good money for the budget right there. Facts. I, I like that. Facts. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Hey, man. Well, shoot, now I'm jealous. <laughs> well, let's get into today's topic because artists... I want to ask y'all, are y'all being creative with your experiences that you offer for your fans? Managers, are y'all pushing creativity when it comes to your fan experiences with your artists? Because my guy Omarion, Mr. O himself, he, he he's doing a little something. I want to share this and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk. I had a little ad that passed my page. You know, I don't know why Omarion was targeting me, how I fell into that subset. Yeah. Oh, maybe because I'm in. I was in. Oh, yeah, Atlanta. You know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He was probably just generalizing. All right. But check this out. Right. For those of you who cannot see and y'all are just listening, this says the O experience, mind, body, and beyond. Ah, man, clever. <laughs> Show <laughs> dates eleven oh six in Atlanta. You got the DMV. He's going to New York and he's going to Philadelphia. Right. I artist uh Omarion is an established artist, but this is different than that type of experience. He says the ultimate connection, private exclusive. Oh, and they spell connection like kinetic, you know, in motion. This oh, is I didn't even catch that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I was wondering get, about that. I ain't gonna lie. Get, get, <laughs> I was a little nervous. Oh, you didn't give him the benefit of the doubt, <laughs> no, bro. I did you not. Was, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> that was a typo. <laughs> All right, the ultimate the ultimate connection. <laughs> private exclusive session with Omarion. Tickets available and it's 250. 250 per ticket. Now we know Omarion is not an artist that people are really paying 250 to go to his show these i mean who who are people paying 250 to go to their show these days i just learned that you know paramore the band and was way yeah. off them they're, they're charging 400 for their show at the tabernacle 400 yeah that's what i learned that's what taj told me last night sheesh exactly so hey. so apparently them apparently them um other than that, I can't think of nobody else. I mean, I'm pretty sure probably like the Kendrick's Drake's, you know, the, the super high level. Act. But that's not even the low. There are still tickets lower, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. They usually have at least like an $80, $90 one that's there what I'm somewhere. Saying. You know, you're in the back. So Omarion <laughs> isn't somebody you would expect to be able to charge two fifty for a show, but this is m m uh, more than a show, right? So yeah. to give you all a little bit more context, right? It says limited ticket is available also on the flyer. Um, the O experience, mind, body, and beyond, the ultimate connection must have a ticket to the uh, event. All sales are final. You will receive details on the secret location via email. Ah, okay. Three to four okay. days before the event. Ah, that, this is what I love, right? This is how you create a little mystery, but at the same time say, hey, we ain't figured this thing out yet. <laughs> and we're not going to book our, our spot until we figure out how many tickets we sell. <laughs> but I get it. I get it. I love it. I love it. So you flip your weaknesses and, and, and use it as marketing, find, uh, as a marketing strength. That's the game. Originals, I guess that's what Omarion takes you on the ultimate experience 
elevating your mind, body, and beyond. Okay, give me some more. Go one on one with the king. Okay, so there's some one on one aspect to this. Okay, he's the king of unbothered. When did he get that title? He- <laughs> hey man, I was I was about to ask you that. What does that even mean? I, hey. I mean, he has been pretty chill recently. Like, well, he's always been chill though. He's yeah. never been like a super out there guy, right? I yeah, kind of like yeah, he's been relatively chill for still yeah. having to be yeah. out there as a celebrity. I, I get I give him that, and then there's a lot of stuff going on like with the group. Yeah, but he's still uh, the tried shit, to yeah. kind of. he's just trying to claim the title for somebody yeah. else. Like it. Yeah, that's, I, that's I, what I'm gonna talk about too. That. Like he like nah, that's me. Let me get okay. that. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unbother in this intimate healing experience. This isn't a show. This is a healing experience as he shares gems on mindfulness principles and practices on how to choose your joy and live an unbothered life oh i love it the branding on it so he might be branding himself as unbothered king of what you know whatever yeah and now he's reinforcing <laughs> what that means he's motivational speaking to his audience that's all that's happening that's how i'm, I'm taking this right yeah, he's giving real shaman vibes right now Ex- now we're getting into the details okay you this unique session includes a personalized autographed copy of unbothered the power of choosing joy i'm assuming that's a book i was just about to, i was like that's a long name for I, an album it gotta yeah, be a book it gotta be gotta- <laughs> all right appetizing cuisine we, okay. we gonna feed you sound it. bath healing i don't know if y'all know about that sound bath you know um you know about the sound bath right no oh man the girls you date bro you know but i never even took me to a sound bath healing. <laughs> apparently i'm in the wrong Yo- the wrong <laughs> day in pool, bro. You don't gotta you don't even gotta <laughs> go to the All right. I'm about to look this up. Bro, I said, like I was missing out. Like I'm like, man, I need to know now. It's, it, nah, it, it's some it's some LA girl shit for sure. They they're big on this type of stuff. Here go Janae Iko doing a sound bath. This time we'll take it slow. So take it, like literally what it says, you just like a like a bathhouse type of thing while music is playing. You don't have to have all that going. Now she's no, she's singing. Hold up, hold up. I'm gonna find this real quick. We're gonna get to the point of of this whole thing, <laughs> but it might take me. I'm trying to find out what that's like. Nah, sound baths are more like they got a little bowl. Here we How go. How would you like to turn your I know innate Jan- Jan- passion I she for helping other for sure, people into wanna... a prosperous part? Like get lost in the rest of her SEO. Yeah, that seemed like, that seemed like her vibe. Yeah. It's all it is, bro. Oh, I have seen this before. Um, I've never been to one, but I've seen it before. You can buy them on Amazon for like 30 or whatever and just, you just, you know, scoop that thing on around and, and, and do it. Work? So, do it work? I mean, I ain't, I haven't done it. Oh, myself. you haven't done it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You okay. know, my my girl uh, requested. I just got it for a gift, so it worked for <laughs> me to get what I wanted out of it. <laughs> but, I, but I didn't do no sound bath. I will tell you that. <laughs> Limited space on only thirty tickets available. Okay. Only About. thirty. So he he legit making it limited. Let me let's go ahead and do the math. I don't even want to do it in my head right now. About 80, 80 bands maybe. Not eighty, bro. Tripping, maybe man, I'm a little. I don't know, man. I don't feel like doing the math. Yeah, somewhat. Uh, Seven thousand five hundred. Now that's interesting. That's not enough. I would think to bring out Omarion. Yeah, well, right? I think it would be more than that. Yeah, we're breaking this down in real time, but again, we're gonna get to the subject. You will receive details on a secret location via email again. So, all right. So this is basically a high ticket event, a higher ticket. I'll consider it more middle ticket, and this is um, something that a lot more artists should consider not necessarily this yeah. right but you have these different experiences that you can do that aren't a part of a show and the only thing that we see typically is the funnel of i have a concert and you can pay me a little bit more to see me backstage all these other things variations of things that i can do while i'm there right it's yeah. a pop-up marketing funnel there i bet he's gonna have some kind of marketing funnel at within this event too 100 right? it's, it's gonna so, be merch right, you pay here but yeah there's some additional merch yeah I bet he he could probably squeak in another twenty bands out of this event. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Some way, probably like, gonna be food vendors that he own or something. There, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, <laughs> like his own. Yeah, advertising a brand. There's more to it, so we're gonna give that benefit of the doubt because I'm pretty sure there is. Because I don't think Omarion is just stepping out for seventy five hundred. Not that he is not enough. He doesn't do walkouts, walkthroughs, and stuff like that. That he might get something like that here and there. Yeah, but still putting up a whole event. I would expect him to have um to want more, but one he might do 
this could be a prototype for a branding experience yeah, that he wants one. to build on. Yeah. Right. You get the footage, but you just try to break even. But then also, I think there's a marketing funnel. But the point is, uh, how creative are you guys getting with your audience? Because we need to see more of this. All right. We need to be see, see more of this. Everybody doesn't have the audience yet. But if you have an audience, right, a show is cool and all. All right. But I'm still disappointed by what I've seen, the the lack of creativity I've seen since the pandemic, right? You would think, oh, pandemic's happening. People are going to get deeper into these virtual experiences. They're going to become more of a real thing. That was very much of a trend that didn't get utilized enough. Yeah. Still hasn't got u- utilized yeah. correctly. And then people went right back to the same system. Yeah. That after yeah. more, bro, we just want about to wait for these shows. What's back? <laughs> finally is back yeah it's like all that time and the wake up call wasn't real I'm not saying don't maximize what you can in this vertical of touring that's already established because the industry has a lot that pushes you in that way and go ahead and get that money but you should at least start thinking a lot more about monetizing outside of that so this is one experience we talked about well you know we both know kari did that really dope show during yeah, the live stream show yeah, yeah live stream show yeah. during the uh the pandemic but again he did it in an extremely dope way right it was yeah. branded it was uh what is it called the uh, weird the, this is weird live stream or something it's, it's something like that yeah kari forgive us if you ever hear this that that we aren't remembering it but <laughs> But like his whole experience was detailed where it was a variety show yep. vibe. Games. So I'm an artist. Obviously, you follow me, but I'm going to play games live on the live stream. Um, obviously, he performs and his whole branding of dropping his ads, which we, maybe we pull that up or something. But like it, it felt like the theme for a TV show, right? Mm-hmm. It was thoughtful commercials. Yeah. Let's it, put it that way. It's definitely something like, I think if he had wanted to keep it going, he set it up in a, in a great way to, it could have turned into a series or exactly. a real show. It could have become an entire yeah. continued series and experience that his fan base is happy to feel a part of, right? Yeah. It could just be a one a year thing. Kind of like, so if you look at Travis Scott with Astro World, right? Yeah. And that was themed, obviously had the album part of it as well. That whole thing was amazing. But, you know, the fans more and more come every single year. Yep. Of course, it's a festival and that's something more specific. But you can do that with these side concepts because yep. what it also gives you a way, you can build a brand using your brand that becomes interesting in and of itself that you don't get to market when you're doing your music. Yeah. Like, oh, a variety show? At this point, people might just come because it's really fun. Yeah. Right? Like, next time around, I'm going to bring my fam- my friends because the shit was dope. It was funny. Yeah. It was cool. Who cares who Kari is? And then next thing you know, you might learn, you come closer to Kari as a part of the process. Or even if you don't, Kari still got your money. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? So, like, that type of thing, there's so many ways... To to do that with these side experiences like with Marion with this he he's hitting this entire fan base right next thing you know he starts to invite sound healers or mm. or shaman or whatever speaks to that fan base have next little motivational thing, panels panels yeah. right exactly <laughs> and he's no longer even the center of it it's just a yeah. concept almost like a festival or a seminar or a conference or whatever and now you can probably charge more and more and more and again he was just the foundation of it so this is a great way to use yourself not only to monetize your fan base in a different way right but also to set the foundation of a brand that started as adjacent to you but you're attacking a vertical that hey we know to be honest you can monetize a lot more easily than you can in the music space. Yeah, yeah, because people will pay for things to do a lot faster than they'll pay for music, right? You kind of, you internalize it differently. You justify it differently, right? Like, oh, this is an experience. I get memories. This show, this song is a song, right? And I'm already kind of thinking of the comments for this, and I know the next question is probably going to be like, but how, you know what I'm saying, how do we how we make these cool experiences for Mm -hmm. these people that tap into us? And the, the biggest thing that I've seen with these artists is they just doing shit they was gonna do anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they're like, hey, how can I like sell my fans on being a part of this thing that I probably was gonna wake up and do anyway today, right? I was already gonna go to a sound spa, right? Yeah. I remember when um 
you know, gotta go, gotta go back to the king. You know what I'm saying? I remember when Lil Yachty was first going on tour, uh, and he had this experience <laughs> no, with no, like. Don't make me do this, man. <laughs> but you know good damn well I did not know you were about to say Lil Yachty when you said that. <laughs> Shout out to Yachty, bro. <laughs> he had this really, this really early tour experience where like you could just hang out with him and eat pizza and play like Uno or something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Rory, you know Rory is right, like from Atlanta. Oh, that, oh yeah, that Rory. That Rory. Yeah. He has the whole like in the woods thing, and I, I feel like yeah, I feel like he just hangs out in the woods anyway it's probably like his vibe right so mm-hmm. i'm saying what artists are like hey like what what is something that i like to do that i can put together see who else in my base is, is interested in it and then from that either i i keep doing it mm-hmm. right or i pivot and i'll be like okay they don't like playing uno well maybe next time i have like a big space game or something you know what i'm saying but i, I think it, it goes back to like just like what else are you interested in outside of music you know what i'm saying like what else do you like to do what yep. do you care about or what have you heard your fans tell you they like to do? Like what do they seem like they will possibly be in based on like the interactions and conversations you've had with them? So like, the Amario thing makes a lot of sense because he's he's older, so he's probably at this point in his life where you know he's he's getting himself together spiritually. Man, you know, like, undoing all the stuff that he done done. Yeah, when he was younger, you <laughs> know, like <laughs> that plus thirty, that thirty five plus mindset, man. Oh, I gotta get shit together now, right? Yeah. So it's probably shit like he like he looks like he does stuff like this anyway. Yeah. I mean, especially in his picture. Yeah, bro. I know it was built for that, but he looked like Black Aladdin right here. But he should have charged like, if it was me, it was me. I would have had the two fifty one. Mm-hmm. I would have had like a five hundred dollar, maybe seven fifty, like guided meditation group where I got. Like you can, you can come be here for this price, but then maybe five of y'all can get this extra ticket. Have you ever seen that? That might, that might be there. That's what I'm saying. That's the that might be the invisible funnel. And now that I have you in this peer pressure space. Oh uh, yeah, I get you saying. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm promising you <laughs> yeah. everything here, right, is controlled to make you want a little bit more. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. like I ain't trying to scare you away with yeah, the price. I'm not yeah. trying to scare you away with these additional <laughs> prices. But I already got that two fifty for you. You're already here, and now you're spending separately because you forgot about the two fifty. You spent it already. Yeah. Now you're just spending five hundred or whatever that that yeah. new number is. Yeah, so that's that's what you might be doing. Yeah, I hope so because, like you said, bro, seven seventy five hundred. I mean, I guess it's what thirty bands for the whole for the whole set. But like you said, that has to be something deep. But there's no way he's traveling to all these. I mean, I guess they're all not that far: New York to Philly, Philly to DMV. Well, no, because Atlanta's first, so Atlanta to DMV, DMV to New York, and then back down to Philly. Yeah, there's no way he's putting all these travel arrangements together without some type of yeah. Upsell in the funnel or something, you know what yeah. I'm saying? No way, no yeah. way. I might have to look deeper. I wonder if he already has like shows in those cities at the times and stuff like that. That'd be cool, that'd be interesting. But, but yeah, I think what you said is a good start, right? Like, just what are you doing? Yeah, already. What do you like? And then there's different levels of it, right? So, you have your, your fan base, music, the main thing they know you for and they come to you for. Now you can take what you like and then figure out what level do I want to introduce this to my fans with. All right. So, yeah, you said Uno. We could do some kind of private Uno experience or yeah. whatever. Go hard with it. But I also could just play Uno versus a fan on live. All right. And it yeah. just be free and just another way to connect with them and build with them. All right. Then, or I could play Super Smash Bros. Right. Yeah. Live. But then I also can host the whole Super Smash Bros. tournament, yeah. right, and have them involved, and then you know run that whole thing up, yeah. right. Then there could be, I don't know what it, I don't even know what it is. Well, there's a virtual live, I mean a virtual tournament, right. Yeah. But then you can do a real life tournament, right, and each of those come with their own different charges and extra things you can do around it. But it all comes from that same idea of this is just another thing I do, or like no name. I think she had a book club years yeah, ago. Yeah, she did, right? yeah. Something like that, right? And then you think about this. I, I have this audience that is reading books with me, right? You might always think, well, where's the angle I can monetize? Well, she might then in the future have recommend books based on author's panner because they know that she has this clout among people who actually are book uh, buyers. Yeah. Right, you know, yeah. have like an email list to blast and get sales or get affiliates, or people are paying you with advertising costs. Bring that speaker in, all right? And there's other ways, and people might have private experiences again. You get into the in person thing. The in person thing is always going to be big in an environment that we're divided in this digital space. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's always going to be a thing. So it's the stuff that you like, and then it's the stuff that. It's just a special experience as a whole. Like, you know, when Ryan Leslie 
did the whole castle experience. You know? No. I don't think so. Yeah, so he, I don't know how many times he did it, but I know at least one time for sure. Because, you know, he has super phone. He's able to hit up his, his you know, most real fans. And they did a private experience where he did a show in a castle. Oh, shit. Yeah. Show <laughs> in a castle, you know, black tie, like real, like upper tier. Yeah, James real swanky. Bondy, yeah. swanky. Yeah, yeah real like swanky, some, yeah. Yeah, like some of that type of stuff. And it was a private show for those people. And you put them in this space that, you know, they're not used to being to that level of experience. That's a whole nother thing, right? It's one thing to just do something cool and private that brings them closer to you. But another thing to do something that just takes them into a space and gives them access that they normally don't have. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? And I think the opportunity to be around you. Like a lot of fans just That's value true. like being in your vicinity. Oh, I might. There's a, there's a high chance I could have a conversation with him. It's much easier to think that when you're in a room full of 30 people than in a room full of 3,000, right? Even if they don't really get to talk to you or never touch you or whatever, like they still think it going into mm -hmm. it. And a lot of people are kind of buying to that stuff. Like I had a homie, um, Tom one time was going to throw like a kickball game at Piedmont and he was going to charge for it, have his fans come out. But there were fans who were going to like fly out here, fly there. And I thought it was crazy, but like they're, they're going to fly from wherever they are mm -hmm. to Atlanta for a kickball game. Yeah. That's how much they like this man. He ended up not doing it. Uh, I can't remember. The, I think it was like just logistical reasons. You know, Piedmont, man. He'd be paper, shit you got to go through to get them to do it. But yeah. that was when it clicked to me. Because I was like, man, bro, he got at least like 10, 15 people talking about, like, yo, when is it? I'll get my hotel. I'll fly out, right? And I don't think he was charging nothing crazy for it. I think he could maybe do like twenty, twenty five dollars to sign up. You know, you get put on your teams once you actually it might have even been free. You no, know I think I think he's gonna do some free shit and just sell like merch and stuff at it, you know, like use it kinda like a free funnel, come play the game. Or he could have had a, a special like Tom Kickball. Shirt. Oh yeah. sorry, yeah. For the teams, yeah. right? You yeah, actually so, yeah. That's a that's true memorabilia to move forward yeah. with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not purchasable. Of course, you have your regular merch that everybody has access to, but only y'all have this specific thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a that's flex a cool in the shit. fan base. Yeah, it's a, a flex in the fan base. Yeah. And that's that's exactly what you want to do. Give opportunities to your fan base members to flex on yeah. other fan That's bases. all they want, bro. They just want to be like, hey, you a fan? I'm a bigger fan because I have, like you said, this exclusive t-shirt. Mm -hmm. The only way you could get this shit is if you pulled up to Atlanta on October, whatever, at 9 a.m. and played this game. And you weren't there, but I was. That's why yes. I got this shit. Yes. So I am better than you as a fan. But <laughs> a good way to think about that too is NFTs, right? Mm. If you listen to a lot of the experiences people thought to make around NFTs and say, oh, well, this is going to become possible. Most of that shit is possible. Yeah. Right? The metaverse and all that, all that stuff they applied it to, okay, that still has to build out and yeah, that's going to become possible. But doing these exclusive events, having special ways to know how, if you can get in, whether it's a password, whether it's a, a specific card or your name's in a database, it's a list. All that exists. You can already do that. Yeah. The symbols, like you said, um, like flex on the fan base with the t-shirt, all those abilities and possibilities already exist. For some reason, though, it just takes people to like have that new outlet to actually see the possibilities yeah. for some reason. I, th I think people just like they're intimidated by trying to make it work in an in old space. Mm -hmm. But it's like the old space has already proven that there are people that are willing to get it. The new space is the shit you should be scared of because it's like, yeah, it's new. There's new right. opportunity. You could cap. Right. But there also could not be people there that are looking for what, you, what mm -hmm. you're trying to offer yet. Yeah. So that's what I think it comes down to, bro. Like, I can eh. see that. So yeah. you're afraid, but now that everything sounds like this is built to support that, you feel like there's a lower chance of failure and it's still in such a new space. If I fail, it doesn't look as bad than me failing in the real world. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like there's not a lot of people here yet, so it's like if it doesn't hit, it's like it's like running a bad ad on Facebook versus running a bad ad on like a new platform. It's like if it doesn't hit on a new platform, there's not enough people that know you fucked up. But Facebook, yeah. it's like there are hundreds of thousands, maybe <laughs> millions of people that saw your bad ad. So I, I think that it kind of comes down to like that same thinking. It's right. like oh, I have the chance to like cap over here really hard, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, I have the, the chance to be, you know, we talked in the last episode to be able to say I was the first person to do X, Y, Z in whatever space, right? So that's a narrative in itself. Yep. Um, but then also, like, there's less eyes on me if I fuck up. And if it goes <laughs> bad, I can just act like it never happened because nobody was over here anyway paying attention to it. That's a huge <laughs> limitation when it comes to a lot of artists, and 
potential embarrassment. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's part of insecurity that comes with not that's a lot of people in general, but especially the personality type who wants to be an artist. Yeah. Right. But a lot of conversations that I have with artists, there's a, a, a lot of barriers or limiting beliefs that come up around embarrassment of some sort. Yeah. Which is weird because you're supposed to want to stick out, right? And part of the stick out risk is embarrassing and, and potential embarrassment. <laughs> potential embarrassment. There's this this concept, right, that most people actually do not want to stand out. Mm. Most people. And the thing about artists, that's why we probably put certain people on a pedestal. All right, just because they are standing out and we innately understand that there's danger with standing out, right? And that's why the crowd doesn't want to stand out, mm. right? Because if I'm out there, it's a risk. I, it's just me out here, right? Yes, there's a lot of rewards that come with it, taking that risk, if you happen to survive out there, but most people don't survive out there, all right? So you look at zebras, and I think it was, uh, what's his name? Jordan Peterson that was, uh, talking about this that I heard. He was talking about how zebras are, you know, they're striped. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, how is that built for camouflage? Right? It's like the lions in the Sahara are more camouflaged with the backdrop than zebras are. Mm -hmm. Right? But they move in these herds. So they're more camouflaged amongst each other. Right? And they're not standing out. The, re the way a lion identifies them is because especially you know lions oftentimes they attack together mm. right oh this one got a, a hobbling leg they can barely move or, or that one's bleeding yeah. so we can all agree that we're chasing this one but when all of them are good you just keep lost you keep you get lost yeah. like oh I was chasing that one I, was, I thought we were chasing that one bro I was like no nah, man I'm yeah. right here <laughs> <laughs> like what's going on so like that risk of standing out right that's how we translate that to humans yeah it's like people wait one of people say there's this innate feeling i think a lot of times people want the rewards of standing out but then that risk just to actually do it you know oh shoot you're gonna get canceled you're gonna get whatever 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 yeah people gonna it's, walk up to you in public yeah people walk up to you in public and yeah. it's a weird feeling i mean i know the first time you experience like all of that is just like a weird thing when people yeah. are, oh what's up and you're like do i know you yeah. what's up yeah you know like, dang these people they see me before i see them yeah I bro. Don't even know. That, it's, that's, it's crazy to think about it like there's somebody out there that knows so much about you and you know nothing about them it's a very wild feeling right <laughs> right a, a very wild feeling so i think most people again they under they admire the fact that someone else is willing to do that knowing that they they Can't aren't or won't yeah all right so um, how do, why do I even get on that anyway? Yeah, well, you smile like artists not want to stand out because it's like it's a part of the job. Either. Like you got to kind of get over that, <laughs> right? Right. And then that came from it was, was derived from why they're willing to look at NFTs, yeah, right, in a certain way and do these experiences that they can already actually do, All right? So bringing that full circle again, there's so many opportunities to do just cool stuff, whatever your brand is, right? Omarion's, um doing this mind body soul type experience right but you could do you know gaming you can do music you might like watching certain movies and your fan base might be really deep into it like if you got a horror core audience and y'all are into horror movies yeah. like whatever that stuff stuff looks like there's so many possibilities so if y'all could dig in be more creative again the beauty of this right is it actually is easier to sell this type of stuff than it is a regular show. Yeah. Right? It's the equivalent of when you have a merchandise brand that can stand on itself versus, hey, it's all my merch is just my face on it. Mm -hmm. you, your audience really got to like you if it's that. Right? But if your shirt is, but God is dope. Right? Yeah. Like, let's say Toby and Wegway. I think I said that right. I don't know. God is dope would have been a great merch brand for him. Yeah. Right. All his stuff could say Toby. Right. But 
a bigger brand for people that don't even know Toby would be God is dope, right? And it's yeah. aligned with who he is and what the type of stuff that he speaks. So that's that example. It's a lot easier to sell that type of thing. You still get the money, right? Look, you can end up being on your own brand's marketing, right? almost looking like, they're like, who is this artist? Why do they have him showcased? Yeah, why is he on everything? <laughs> why, is he, why is he? And it just makes it seem like you got a sponsorship or whatever, and you're somebody. All right, so like, all those opportunities exist when you start to move outside of this space and place, but you can tie it back to your artistry where it makes sense and it creates new fans. And if it doesn't create new fans, it's at least creating new money. So I encourage y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all definitely take advantage of these opportunities especially the way you can do it today but we're gonna move on to another topic because Corey, you send in a really really dope video uh really cool story and the way i guess i could say this like oprah out here blessing people changing lives bro. changing lives man oprah. changing lives let and, me and i would put out this video every week man and nobody would watch it nobody I don't and that i would put out this video every week man and nobody would watch it nobody and and i say this and this is not even a joke is every week it would get like 11 or 12 views this video and my mother was watching nine of those hmm. you know and so it was no one was watching this thing but i thought this was a way for me to at least create my brand within the space now it turns out that one of those 11 views was oprah but people say hey, like Okay, how, how did Oprah find you? The reason why Oprah was able to find me is because a year prior, I was doing pro bono matchmaking services. Free work. Free work. One of my clients, and I had no idea, but one of my clients was a writer for O Magazine. Year later, she's on Oprah's jet. Oprah says, I have a concept for a new TV show. I'm looking for a fresh voice. My client in the jet says, have you heard of Paul Brunson? Oprah says, no, but let me see. YouTube search, oh, Paul Brunson, save, let me start watching. So Oprah was watching this YouTube series. And, and you know, when I always look at it, I say, gosh, to me, it is a powerful. St That's crazy. That's well, actually, does he have a gem at the end on top of this? Ooh, shall I let it? Let story let because it. she ends up offering me a job to co-host a television show with her on her brand new network off of this YouTube series that no one was watching, but Oprah, my mother, and like two other people. And I say, it's a powerful story about quality over quantity. Ultimately, bam, there it is. There it is. And EJ, you got to uh, superimpose that video. My bad, man. I didn't even do my little switch, but um, it's so much. To this video, I wonder what it's like on over his jet, by the way. It's probably rich. comfy. That's, you know, probably comfy. Yeah, probably comfy. <laughs> for, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I think there's so many points in this when it comes to content consistency, like just the power of content, period. But let's focus on that last thing first that he said, which is quality over quantity. And I don't even I don't even want to stress the quantity the over quantity, but just the importance of quality content. Yeah. Right? Because look, man, we've, we've had people ourselves that we find out, yo, this person watched the video. Mm -hmm. Like these people reached out to me and, you know, even early on, right. Before we're even doing the things that we've done, it's like, yo, like how did they find this in the first place? Yeah. You never know. I mean, you got, Actually, I can think of one person who's pretty big, very well known. If I say his name, you would say it. Sure. Whatever. This guy's son <laughs> was watching, right? And the son wanted to be an artist, uh, right? I'm so he did, yeah, yeah. right? Son wanted to be an artist. So he found, um, reached out to me, wanted to work with us. His music was trash. That's why it's better I didn't say his name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah music was, was, was trash. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, you know, he was early on it. I think it has since improved, but it was just like, you know, just starter stuff. And but I never would have guessed, right? That yeah. anyway, I could have got with that person. Or when we work, our work with uh with Macy was through our content, not a label, not any connections. Yeah. I was like, oh, saw one of the webinars on top of that, which is 24K was the same. 
Golden. Yep. Yeah, Golden was had been watching us um uh, before we were even official in that in that makeup. We technically contrabrand hadn't even started. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He had been watching us already. So you never know literally who is watching your stuff and you don't know who the people who are currently watching your stuff will become. Yeah. Yeah. And I, to me that's the biggest point. Like you said, it's like this video has 10 views on it, but like all it takes is one of those 10 views to be somebody that could do something for you and then it becomes sometimes more worth it than maybe the video that got 100,000 views or a million. I remember, um, I don't know if you remember, but we were doing a campaign for Kellen Bree one time and I always remember at the end of it, we did like a meme campaign for it. And like the meme campaign did, I think, pretty well for the budget, but it didn't do nothing like crazy. Yeah. Um, but I remember her telling me after the campaign, like, yo, like, this A and R from such and such record label reached out to me. I wonder how they saw it. I'm like, no, the fuck they saw it. What you mean? You wonder? <laughs> <laughs> Us, we the reason they saw it. But the post that I asked her, I was like, yo, can you ask the A and R like how they found you? Um, just you no, know, just I'm pretty sure she'll tell you. And yeah, she had came from like one of the smaller meme posts we got. And like that meme campaign probably was like eight, nine went up. The biggest one had maybe two hundred thousand views. It was the post that maybe had like a thousand views on it that the A and R happened to see and reached out to her about. I was like, man, it's crazy. She didn't come from the big one. She came right. from the one that you probably in your head were trying to say, like, oh, this shit wasn't even worth it. You know what I'm saying? Only got a right. thousand views on it. This right. shit got a thousand, it's got two hundred. I wanted that all across all the posts. And so, like you said, we've seen it with clients. I've seen it. I've had conversations with people in real life. They're like, oh bro, I love you. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. You don't follow me on nothing. Like, well, how do you how you say you love me, bro? I don't get to follow me. Like, no, I, mean, I just watch your content and I kinda or you come up on my for you page, you come up on XYZ, and then that's when it starts to click where it's like, man, bro. Like, I always tell clients, like, you got to remember, bro, these views are like real people. You know real what I'm people. Like, real people. Every view, every like is a real person. And you don't understand the impact that person could have on you until they either make the impact, they do it, or you talk to them. You understand, like, oh, shit, like, you know, Blue J123 is the fucking the main promoter at this club I've been trying to perform at for the last six right. months. Oh, shit, dude was just watching my... He was one of my four people in my live for the last month and a half of some crazy shit, bro. It's yep. wild. Yeah. It's wild. Man, it's it's so interesting because like the quality, right? The quality, quality, quality versus what we think people want to see from us or what the algorithm wants to see with us mm -hmm. from us. That chasm, that gap is a risky gap, right? Because a lot of times in trying to go viral and trying to get seen and adjust for what you think the marketplace wants to see a lot of times we lose what makes us unique yeah or just what creates quality in general come off too try hard right to try hard mm -hmm. whatever that is right and now you'll have somebody see it and even if that person is important right they might not connect with it the same. Yeah. Because you're so busy just looking like everybody else. So I don't even notice. Oh, yeah, just another one of those funny videos or another one of those songs that sound like this. It was cool, but nothing special. Right. And as a matter of fact, with Taj, right? So remember, got to send his project to Urko before, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. before it dropped. Right. Now imagine if he made it. I don't know, like just on some regular trendy stuff, right? That's cool. And it probably could do well. And then you might end up having somebody like him work on it just because you're big and you're doing it, but they might not care as much for the music. Yeah. But the other way around is, oh, snap, you hear it. And, you're, and this person's like, yo, this junk is crazy. And everybody who hears it on an individual level is like, this is crazy. So when it comes to trying to get people to help you for something, yeah, they're more willing to do it. Yeah, they believe in it more. They believe in it more. And that's part of heck, right? And I wanted to talk about it in the video, actually, of getting things done in the industry, right? Like, when you do real dope work, like, why is somebody helping you? Let's put it that way. Corey, you can reach out and be like, hey, Sean, man, you know, I got this artist. Can you do such and such for him? You know, and I'll be like, check it out. Dang. It's I. Right. But I rock with Jacory though, so I guess I'll go ahead and mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Or do I be like, "Yo, this shit is hard." Yeah, send them over, bro. With Jacory, yeah. so I'm definitely gonna do this shit. Yeah. Right? Like, it's a whole different mentality, and 
the power of having great content, whether that's music, whether that's your music video, whether that's your post, whatever you're doing, right? Great at whatever you're doing. So his his example was, I guess he was what giving a relationship advice. Yeah, he has. Person. Yeah, he. I don't know his exact backstory, but he was pretty much just giving people yeah free relationship advice, turning into content. All right, like the power of just doing that in a way that actually hits. It, it's a slower burn sometimes, but when it catches to the right people. Like, man, it sticks and it's so much easier to help get other people to move on your behalf, not just, oh, the algorithm got a hold of it and a lot of people saw it, but, oh, real people are willing to help me get it seen, put it on their platforms, um, attach their name to it. That's a whole different type of thing. And you actually touched on something huge. Um, and my voice just cracked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um the post for Kalen Bree. Yeah. Right? The one that had a thousand was the one that got seen by that A and R, not the ones that mm-hmm. went more viral. And we judge things superficially just by Yeah, views, likes. Views, yeah. Views and likes. But where did I give you? Maybe that page, for whatever reason that only had a thousand, happened to be followed by more industry type people. Yeah. Right? Because maybe that page is known for quality post. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and we see it. Like, how many pages have we come across that have, like, 800 followers, but then all 800 be, like, A&Rs, VPs, you know what I'm saying, promoters, things like that. And it's like, yeah, from a surface level standpoint, maybe engagement standpoint, you're like, this shit is not worth it. But you think about who it could tie into, and you're like, no, this is probably five times worth whatever that might be trying to get me to do yeah, for exactly. it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so it, it's really dope. Because this applies across the board in this day of content creation, especially. I mean, you know, again, like we're talking about Oprah and and dudes literally talking about like yo nine views, yeah, and somewhere in ever city. I'm sure sometimes it was thirteen or twenty, but like overall, like you really ain't getting no views. He didn't, he didn't expect to wake up and get a call yeah. by Oprah, bro. He he didn't see that coming. No way, bro. <laughs> no way. But that's it's it's real, man. Like I and I can say for a fact, right? Being quote unquote at this point to some people, right? An industry person. Mm. I know that I'm <laughs> watching, <laughs> right? I know I'm watching some pages, right? That I might not be following, right? Or I'm watching some artists and I am following. They might not even know because they're, they might, I don't know, for whatever reason, they might just, just might not know. Like there's this one guy, his name is Silas. I don't oh, know yeah, if you know. Silas? Yeah, yeah. right? Now, this is not necessarily beside a, a perfect example because this dude is like popping already. Um, you know, like he has this one song, I ain't stressing today. Mm-hmm. He had been working it. I just DM'd him off of seeing like three, four posts, not even his post. No, I saw one of his posts and I saw some other people post to it in the sound. Just off of that, I'm just like, this is dope. As a matter of fact, one of the comments that made me hit him up was someone saying, I'm so glad that this didn't become a thing because I didn't like it or whatever. And like, why is it still popping up? And for <laughs> me, that was like, oh, this dude is consistent, yeah. right? Which I loved. Yeah. So I was like, and I hit him up just like, yo, like, how long have you been doing this? I think he said he had been working it like a year or Yeah, something. like a year, but longer yeah. or something. Yeah. Which made me F with him even more. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely following this dude. And just now I saw like Lupita, Mm-hmm. Um, post it and like some other people and some other names and that's just working that one song that he really believes in got the dance to go with it so consistency with the content and the song's actually good enough where you start to have celebrities connect with it in their own way yeah. to be on it as a matter of fact then we can look at uh oh, dang. I keep forgetting we uh, so a big time artist right we can say this. We can say Snoop hopped on oh, okay. Okay. Buddy Song, yeah, okay. right? Yeah. Snoop hopped on Buddy Song, and Buddy Song doesn't really have no views. It's not really known by anybody like that. But not only was it a really high quality song, dope concept, it matched Snoop's brand yeah. perfectly. So when your content, and this is goes it innately goes with quality, and also because part of quality within content is some level of authenticity to whoever you are or whoever you're speaking to, right? Yeah. So when I talk about 
somebody in the industry willing uh, willing to go to the ba- go to bat with you, not just off of the favor of their friend, but for the, the content itself, is a it's about can I see a vision for it? I'm like I see where this can go, me personally. So I really want to do something with it. It's not even work for me to like figure out. I don't even want to take time. Well, what can I do for him? What can I post about it? I was like I know exactly what to say in my caption. Or I know exactly who the collab should be. However, my connections can make us make sense for it. I got a vision because I see the vision from the content, right? Yeah. My point being, that specific song was specific enough in its energy that Snoop Dogg could see himself on that song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And versus just, oh, that's another good song. So that's part of not watering things now for a trend too, because then people aren't going to be able to connect with it on the same level. Yeah. So, man, it that quality content conversation is, I don't know, you know, as marketers and then you know people like we, we talk about tiktok so much and all that stuff i think people think that we're all about like chase viral yeah like and, people forget you can do both it's like you can make a both. you can make a corny tiktok and then drop the greatest music video ever credit in the same week like, you know what i'm saying like they're, they're, are they're, you saying that a corny video needs to be a part of your strategy maybe depending on who you are <laughs> you know what i'm saying like or you know if you're trying to lighten the brand up a little bit you know nothing lightens up the mood like a corny video you know <laughs> Unless they already don't like you, then it's just, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's just like, I don't yeah, know. I feel like it's artists. It's like a 50 Cent talking about Nick Cannon. Yeah. He said, talking about, like, why does he keep rapping? I don't understand. Yeah, exactly, bro. It's like, I, I, artists, I feel like always paint it in a way like you have to do one or the other. Like, either I'm going to make the most amazing visual content ever created, or I'm going to make a TikTok. And it's like, why can't you do both? Mm, yeah. <laughs> You would be much better off if you could figure out to do both. You right. know what I'm saying? And then, and then plus, amazing is in the out of behold. I've seen some amazing music videos that were mid compared to some TikToks. I've seen some masterpiece TikToks, bro. Where I'm like, damn, bro, he really, he or she really sat down and created this, put That's this exactly. together. So, and um, I think the whole quality thing too, just going back to his clip, is it comes down to messaging, right? Like, if the messaging reaches who you were trying, or if you have a messaging in something and it reaches who it's supposed to hit, that audience is going to say this is quality. If it hits mm-hmm. people that don't care about the message, they they, mm-hmm. they might disagree unless like certain elements of it really are so high quality. We've seen some shit before that we didn't like, but you we won't knock it and say that shit was trash. It's like, I don't like it, but no, nah, that shit kind of fire. You know what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. So a perfect example would be for this guy, Paul Brunson, mm-hmm. to have got on the relationship talk train we know relationships he's in a relationship category and we know exactly how polarizing relationship talk can be can be on instagram yeah or social media everything general, really right yeah he could have came from r.i.p kevin samuels type of angle mm-hmm. right but that might have not have been him yeah right that's not my energy that's not my type of advice that's not my voice but oh this is working let me do that i want to bet Nine times out of ten, nine point nine times out of ten, Oprah doesn't resonate with a Kevin Samuels voice. She don't want to stand next to a Kevin Samuels in that specific voice mm-hmm. for what she's trying to put out. So he would have missed that opportunity, right? Yeah. Paul wouldn't have got that trying to copy. And I'm just using Kevin as an example, but there's so many different directions and voices and ways that you can speak, right? Let's just say if he was caught. Uh, uh, like just uh cursing a lot mm. or using the n-word a whole whole lot right which you know oprah doesn't like the n-word i don't know if you remember that whole yeah. thing she had against uh jay-z and all that stuff for a moment yeah yeah like yeah. so those little things would have made a difference for her yeah all right so that goes back to like whatever your voice and your style of doing it is do it in that voice and style and there's somebody who will resonate on those different levels but if you get caught up trying to Talk to everybody. Yeah, talk to everybody and switch off of something just because it works. Then you'll probably miss out on those things because, true, she might have had trouble finding somebody who speaks in his voice because of all the things that are popular on social media and those other voices because I don't see anybody who speaks. I'm not really accustomed to his his content, but for everything, even just that vibe, him talking, yeah, I can't see him (laughs) talking crazy. Seems very encouraging and and positive and, and, you know, politically correct in in some ways, you know? (laughs) Very advertiser friendly. Yeah, advertiser (laughs) friendly. There we go. There we go. (laughs) Now, with that being said, you know, Content, 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 content. We are in a new content creator space. And 
I don't know, man. It seems like artists are being disrespected these days. Like people don't really respect music. And I want to talk about why mm. they don't really care about artists or respect artists quite the same. Mm. Straighten right? up my chair a little bit. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? you know, get, get, get yourself together. Get, tense. get yourself together. <laughs> Here's the context that we're gonna start with, right? Rice gum. Okay. Right? Influencer. Star rapping, right? Hannibal Burris, for y'all who don't know, great comedian. Uh, yeah, great comedian. Great writer. Great writer. Mm -hmm. Starting to be a rapper. He's pursuing it in the most respectful way I've seen, right? But one starting to be a rapper and like retired from doing comedy, just to rap. Bo Burnham, another comedian. Mm-hmm starts dropping music right look at some of these random influencers who never even wanted to do music that were getting signed to then do music right? yep yep everybody's dropping in the song bag people are getting people are like looking at music as a lick let's yeah, look at that 100%. even if it's only for views right on the other side what other categories do you see getting taken advantage of to that extent? It's not to the same degree, but I would say now, probably like boxing and fighting. Every influencer is trying to box All and right. fight. Yeah. Not to the same degree. Not to the same degree. Boxing and fight. That's actually a good, a great example, actually. Yeah. Um, because like you said, it's not to the same degree, but people are doing it who don't fit that tradition. Mm -hmm. Right. In the same way, you could argue that comedy might be you know yeah you know people yeah. are think they're funny yeah right? everybody's dropping some videos that are some type of funny and then stand-up comedians specifically i right, feel like they're being taken advantage of right so i don't think there's almost any content creator creative space that's not experiencing some level of people from the outside just taking it lightly and trying to create content on it but it seems like on a high level, the music music is being exploited differently. Why? Because there's more infrastructure or report uh, support of it. I think in some ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Think about Bad Baby. Yeah. Being signed to Atlantic. All right. Yeah, she came into the machine. She came into the machine. The sh machine truly support and said that we're gonna do this and. I mean, there's, there's other examples like that. Um, like you have somebody like DDG who took it seriously, mm -hmm. right? So that's fine. Probably did the best out of all of them, I would argue. I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, him and Queen Niger. Queen Niger was an influencer first? Yeah. I know that. Yeah, bro. Queen Niger was um, on YouTube and she was in a relationship with uh, some guy. Well, I guess maybe it's, she might. Her, her first son, I don't know how many kids she has, but I know she has a she had a son with that one um, guy, and then they broke up. That became a whole thing. So they had a couples page. Oh, uh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. She used to sing covers and stuff too on YouTube. She was one of those people, and then yeah, broke up, and then now she got some other guy. Um, in some ways, gives me similar vibes. Just she got a type ish, but <laughs> <laughs> but they um. But yeah, she came from that way. And she's like, you look at her, her and think artist first. You don't even think YouTuber or anything yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So she did it seriously. But again, most people are violating. Let's look at the, the meme pages. All right. And this is why I think music is getting exploited on a different level and it's more disrespectful. Because as an artist, you see that some random meme song goes up and a record label said, oh, snap, we want to sign them or we want to at least sign that song and we want to exploit that song. Now, the record label, you get it because they're just trying to make money short term and they know these windows come and they don't expect the song to be serious and their their business model is set up in a way that that doesn't necessarily hurt them. At yeah. least not short term. Maybe there's an argument that long term you're ruining the industry and it'll slowly collapse because you signed this meme song or this random <laughs> one off. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's that. But on a short term basis, for sure, it's like, oh, yeah, we just capped. We made a good year. That was an extra million in the bank. 
to report to our shareholders or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. But, the, and the artists are like, well, dang, that's what you want. That's what you want. <laughs> like some Her? Around, him, like, him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. I think that's going to be, that is something that I know I've seen a lot of artists. Um, they hate it, bro. They hate it. They hate it. They hate yeah, it. yeah, I just gotta say it. They hate it. They don't like it. They're not fucking with it. <laughs> but, but why is it so easy to do it with music? I think, I think music. I should probably say this. I think music probably has one of the lowest barrier of, of entries with a lot of the creative. Like think about it, it's like lower barrier entry entry compared to like other things. You want to paint and do certain things. Like you gotta, you have to own the equipment. You know yes. what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta buy the supplies. There's not as high of a demand for it. Like you could decide today I wanna be a painter. Doesn't mean that tomorrow there'll be people gonna buy your painting. You could decide today that I wanna be a music artist. You go drop this shit in a Reddit thread, like you might get eight people that listen to it, right? Eight people that could potentially grow into consumers or, or yeah. fans or whatever. So I think like one is just that. I think a lot of them see it as like a very low barrier to entry, especially, especially from an influencer standpoint, because what do we always say? The hardest part about being an artist is learning how to get attention. As an influencer, you've already mastered that part of mm -hmm. the game. So now your hurdle is, can I make, let's say, the best of quality song at the least a listenable song, right? Which I've said it before on other episodes, I don't think that's as hard as a lot of people like to make it out to be, right? Like you have the influence and the money, right? You can put yourself in the room with certain people. You can put yourself in, you know what I'm saying? Get yourself in certain situations with producers and writers and things like that. It might not make you amazing, but it might make you listenable to, right? And listenable yeah. to is enough to get things moving for a lot of people, especially yeah. after we just talked about the whole fan experience thing. If a influencer I like drops a song, I'm going to listen to it, not because I think they're amazing, Easy. but because I like this influencer, right? So he could have dropped he or she could have dropped damn near anything and I would want to check it out. They just chose the phone that attention to music. So I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons to it. Like they see it as like a very easy attention flip, which it is. It's like the like that biggest barrier of entry is getting attention. Hey, I already have a hundred thousand followers here or a million followers here. If I can just direct those people to Spotify doing something I already know how to do, because I already know how to make great content, right? Most of them are, are really good content creators. I already know mm -hmm. how to speak to my audience and engage them and make them excited about things I can do. The hardest part of this is now me just making the song. That's nothing, bro. That's a that's a that's a couple hours on Google and some phone calls and you in the <laughs> studio session, bro, making some shit. See, I think a part of that, like you said, you don't even have to be amazing is mm -hmm. your song can be good for the people while it's still bad. Yeah. Like the have you seen the period odd girl on TikTok? Period odd. You didn't say period. Oh, period odd. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That girl, bro. That shit. That shit was so terrible, so bad. And I don't even like calling music bad, but that shit was bad. Hey. So bad it flipped her into fame, bro. It's crazy. Exactly. We get one. We get at least one of those a year. Like some the internet jokes somebody Easy. into stardom like at least once a year. Easy, right? <laughs> so when it can be that, right? It's not even necessarily a good song, and people almost know that it's not a good song but it still connects in some way mm -hmm. like think about being younger like when the hood rap in atlanta was like big yeah right i'm not not when the hood, hood rap was big i'm just, what am i trying to say like when hood rap was less sophisticated right like pro tools and all this stuff that wasn't as figured out like now bro most of the like known hood rap actually sounds good mm -hmm. right like in terms of the audio quality. Yeah. We listened to the shit that we were listening to. That shit was horrible. Yeah, quality. bro. I was making on computer mics and shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So going back and listening to that, it was like, dang, but it still hit. It's still connected. Mm -hmm. Right? So you don't... And some of these people might only have one hit back then or whatever. They weren't the most sophisticated lyricists, like songwriters, whatever, whatever. But it's still connected because it was real based off of what you understood, where you came from. Right? So you take that and then you put that out to basically the rest of the world. Everybody has maybe one song in them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's Just true. And all it takes is one. Speaking that experience <laughs> and letting everybody relate, whether it's funny, right? Like or some true go hard. But I think obviously the ones that tend to go up are those ones that, you know, some level of funny, right? Or some level of relatability flexi i think the perfect combination of 
could easily have been a bad song, but it's actually a great song, which is why the moment I heard it, I said, this shit is a hit. Glorilla. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. What's the official name of the song? I'm so bad at song names. FNF. FNF, right? No, I'm saying, oh, okay, now I remember what to say. Yeah, okay, cool. FNF, easy, right? It's, it's funny. Mm-hmm. There's a level of flex in it. Some relatability. The relatability, mm-hmm. and it's the type of stuff that somebody would just say anyway, mm-hmm. right? And there's a lot of people who can do that, all right? They might not put it together. The production might not be as good, but it's a lot of people who can do that and connect because the space that it's coming from all together is just like it's a real authentic space mm-hmm. right so i think that's what makes it so easy for other people to catch on to the space and at least catch one you don't really get challenged unless there's a whole album needed yeah right and you know you got to create yeah. another song you yeah. got to create another song yeah. that's something different but a lot of people don't even want that from outside the space it's like oh i just want to create one song for fun Right, just for the experience, and a lot of them you talked about Spotify. They don't even want to monetize it necessarily. They don't care about monetizing it as much. Yeah, like it's just more almost like for marketing or just to have a video that went viral, and then shoot as a label. Especially, it's like, well, shoot, they don't even want to truly lock down on these percentages and stuff like that. They don't yeah. care the same, so I might as well take uh, the lion's share of this particular track and let them have their fun. Let them have their fun. <laughs> Let them have their fun while I sit back in the house and count the money. Yeah, cause that to me is one of the bigger parts of it too, where it's like every, I feel like I've heard other people say this too, but it's like every other creative profession, it always feels like deep down they want to be a music artist, right? Mm-hmm. Like athletes, actors. Yeah, definitely the athletes. You know what I'm saying? Now we see the influences. Like they all kind of have like that dream in there. Like, man, what would it be like to be a big rapper or a big mm-hmm. pop star or whatever? And so I think a lot of them just do it just because I, I think of an influencer mentality. Like if you're a big enough influencer and you've tried en- enough products and things with your audience, like you got probably got in your head, like there's nothing I can't sell. You know what I'm saying? Like if Mr. Beast wanted to drop an album today, that should probably be top 10. You know what I'm saying? Cause, Easy. cause of who he is, right? Easy. I hope he don't do that. But you know, if he did, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so you, you know, you think about the influence, you selling t-shirts, you selling shows, you selling, chicken nuggets, like random shit. And then you get to music and nothing and you're just going to tell you you can't sell music. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've sold all these other things that are much harder to get yeah. created and packaged and produced than a song is. So why wouldn't I take that leap? Um, and then, you know, music can have a, a crazy return on investment if the right things spark off. You know, like you could record a thousand dollar song and that shit blow up and makes you millions, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's, I think there's a a level of potential return on investment that these influencers see in music that they don't they don't see with their other creative avenues. Like it doesn't because like, like I said, like a painting, it's hard for like a painting to go viral. Right? Like yeah. it's hard for like a um, it's hard for like a stand up comedy clip to go viral and have the same impact because the clip might just lead to ticket sales. It's still something hard you gotta have set up. Maybe if you're selling like digital products or whatever, but it's like, but music is like the attention is gonna shoot off to thirty different streaming platforms. I'm, I'm getting paid from all of them. Mm-hmm. It's gonna make me look cool to my audience, right? Because they're like, oh, now such and such is rapping. So they're gonna buy in deeper into my brand narrative and my story and even mm-hmm. the other things I have going on. And then, like you said, it's like, if this shit work out, I might have a legitimate career. If it don't work out, I can always be like, well, that was fun. Now back to the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it back pushing wherever I was at before. Bruh, do you remember Kim Kardashian dropping a song? Yes. You remember Paris Hilton dropping a song? Yes. I remember all of them doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird time. Like, a very, very weird time. Very weird time. Why are these people doing that? Right? Like, why are they dropping music and not more comedy? Right? More act, legitimate acting. And we know that a lot of people have tried at acting. Right? That some actors feel like shouldn't have. And some of them feel like, oh, they've taken some of our spots because they already have some celebrity. We know mm-hmm. that's a real feeling in that space as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. But the lasting value is different, I feel like, because of one major thing. You can do it in the dark. You can create music in the dark. Mm. All right, I'm in this room. I create. I can mess up a whole bunch of times. I can have a producer work magic, literally. <laughs> right? Mix engineer work magic, literally master this thing. And then it gets presented to the world. But to do acting at scale, I gotta get good at this. Yeah. And even if I do it badly, cause I got into a room that, you know, 
I normally wouldn't have based off of the talent where it is, but you know, my name, the money, connections, whatever. But still the audience looks at it and they're like, that's bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then you can't really keep doing it. You can't ever get looking like looked at as truly serious. So it's just a different path and it's a different type of labor that comes with a lot of these other routes that I don't think music has music doesn't come with and definitely doesn't have the same level as potential embarrassment because you can at least give it your approval before it goes out. Yeah, and I mean, you said something too. Um, I think is one of the bigger things with it is like the the perceived amount of talent you have to have to be successful in the thing. Like in acting, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are bad actors out there. They probably don't get far, but they exist, right? Yeah. Um, but like you, you don't have the potential to make it to a, being a top tier actress or actor without being like a pretty high level actor. Same, I feel like with comedy, right? Like comedy, you're not hitting the big stages until you perfected comedy at a certain level. Music is one of the only artistic skill sets where you legitimately could make your very first song today and have an audience in the next couple of months. So you haven't perfected it yet. You haven't gotten, Mm -hmm. you know, let's just like quote unquote good at it yet, right? Like you may be bad to some people because it's such a preference thing. And like I was saying earlier, like the internet jokes one terrible artist into stardom every at least one a year every yeah. year it's at least one yeah. and so it's like that could be you and the only difference between you influencer or celebrity with bad music and random artists with bad music is you already got an audience there's already people who are gonna listen to it anyway just because you on it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. you put it out so you have a little bit of an advantage in the head start that might kick off all the other things that are used to convince us like this is actually good you know what i'm saying you know what my example of all examples that i fall back on oh who what Yes. I'm gonna give you one guess. I don't wanna guess and say too many, you know what I'm saying? Names. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I can already tell you going the like, wrong direction. Like I was like, yeah, bro, like I don't know where you about to take this. I can already tell you go the wrong direction. Cause this is an easy one that you wouldn't feel that way about. Rebecca Black Friday. Oh yeah, hundred percent. hundred percent. Bad song. Everybody joked about it being bad. And it was so bad that in some way it was an earworm and good yeah. and you can't forget it. And now everybody knows who she is. Yeah, right? I wouldn't. I would not have said that. Yeah, so I had at least three other I, songs. I, 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 saw, I was my... like, nah, let me hurry up and slide in, slide in the bass before he <laughs> put, put something out there. So, but it's a perfect example. Right? Yeah, like yeah. You, you cannot beat that. It's so easily and specifically bad that it made people talk about it. Right. That's what. That's the other struggle. Um, well, I'll get into that in a second. But like, so people talked about it. And they talked about it so much that they shared it. Oh, you got to hear how bad this shit is, dog. Yeah. Share it. But dang, it's catchy. And now uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. You got that junk going in your head. Or now you're singing it almost in making fun of her. But still, you're still sharing it at the same time. And that loop exists. And then it became a thing. I remember when she dropped the song a few years later that she was actually kind of good. It's like, oh, she actually can sing a little bit or she's not all that bad. Like that became a story for her second <laughs> song just because her first song was so bad. That's, That's it's, so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. The, we talked about this last episode. They like, if, <laughs> if you fail big enough, it's hard to lose. Yeah. Because you can flip it whatever way you want to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that to me is the disrespectful part with the influencer thing is like, the, the perceived amount of talent you have to have because like either they come into it thinking like hey I am good at this thing right. and I have a passion for it or they come into it thinking like man all this other shit trash I could do it you know what I'm saying and I feel like a lot more lean towards the right because you know you have like you have the outliers like the DDGs and like the Paul Brothers and things who could you know put out well, I like DDG, so I think his music is great. But the rest of Paul Brothers' music was good. I didn't actually have not listened to. The I Paul don't Brothers. remember just so, by default. I was like, yeah, I'm not really interested yeah. in checking it out. I'm going to assume no. I just remember them being the headline because one of them paid for like a Gucci verse or something, and then or tried to put out like Gucci was fucking with him, and Gucci was like, Nah, they paid me for that shit. It became like a whole <laughs> thing, and I was like, Man, the biggest narrative here is that they could afford a Gucci feature because that was like, I mean, they were big at the time. They weren't like right. nowhere near where they are today, right? Um, but yeah, like it's like because we've worked with influencers that wanted to be artists, and like there are some of them. I'm like, okay, your music is good. You probably really do care about this thing. Like people are allowed to have other creative interests outside of whatever their main thing is. So, yeah. but I think that accounts for like maybe max fifteen percent. I think the other eighty five percent is like, oh, that shit looks easy, so I'm gonna get in that shit. Especially rap, bro. Every everybody thinks they can rap. Everybody <laughs> thinks they can rap. Everybody, bro. Oh, you're just saying words. 
<laughs> there and I guess a key word too you said is creative, right? Mm-hmm. Most creatives don't see a limit to what they can do yeah. creatively. Yeah, they think they can do everything. They think they can do everything, <laughs> and oftentimes don't necessarily respect <laughs> the other craft yeah. as it should be. Because shoot, we've seen some bad celebrity music, mm-hmm. right? Um, what's his name? Lamorne, Laverne. Lakeith? It's not Laverne. It's Lakeith? Like Laverne. Yeah, Lakeith. Yeah. Lakeith. Mm. My guy. I that tell music. that brother to hit us up. Well, I think, yeah. <laughs> he said, <"What?" laughs> I tell that brother to hit us up. Hey, man. I, no, don't hit me up, bro. <laughs> don't hit me up. I would love, hey, I, I respect your, your craft, and, you know, art wise and everything. Only reason I say I would love to work with you, but I, don't hit me up because I'm not a producer. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just don't yeah. have the talent to make you better. Right? That's just really not my thing. But you want to be marketed like you you have a great creative mind i'm sure you have really cool concepts that that that's my sauce that's my juice but yeah do not hit me up until it sound good i can't even play that game right and that's and that's me respecting the craft of a producer right <laughs> like who else dropped some uh i feel like it was one other person that it was so bad and I respect him so much that i don't mind commenting on how much bad it was but then like michael b jordan drop a song or something I don't know. I don't know either. They don't call me on that. I don't know. Let's, <laughs> let's, I'm, I'm gonna try to Google real. It quick. feels right though. Like it feels like something he would have done. Let me see. Michael, <laughs> mm, Jordan. Oh, song? um, The Rock dropped a song recently. Yes, The Rock. The Rock. That's what it was. Yes. <sighs> see, <laughs> The Rock's music though, I would not put on the level of Lakeith's because. It was good trash, and what I mean, it was good, theme trash. It was trash with a with a clear message. With a clear message, <laughs> reasoning, and a target, a clear target, a target demographic. demographic. Yeah. It, it was like I understand what this is. Yeah, it's like corporate, so it's, it's so it's supposed to be, not necessarily be great. Yeah, that's what it felt like a corporate thing. You know, and like oh, this is one of them cheesy songs in a commercial or something like that, yeah, right? And yeah. you don't get hold the same weight to it, or it was like the the theme song to a kid show. Now, you know, some kids shows will have some great theme songs, yeah. but then there's also a lot of them that aren't necessarily all that hot, and it's just cool. You don't really judge it that way. That's how I look at what The Rock did, because you can't even like The Rock's image. It'd be hard for him to have a good song that's that allows his image to be the image that it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, so that's different, right? But it does go back to the theme, right? Of what actually gets attention, and when people get upset, oh, why is this bad music getting attention? Well, remarkability, right? Always going back to that theme, the word remarkable. What does it mean? Worth remarking about, right? Someone's gonna tell somebody else about it, so. Good music, eh? Like I don't know. I might hear a good song, but I might not necessarily share um that song. Mid music, not necessarily so. All right, mid music is almost good music these days. Mm-hmm. Right, great. All right, we're getting better. Excellent, off the chain. However you want to say it, that's the stuff that gets shared a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Right, where it's like, wow, you bro, you gotta hear this song. You heard this song. Then on the other side of the spectrum realistically most trash does not get shared yeah right right. it really doesn't so sometimes it feels like that but most trash does not get shared we're talking about without somebody having a platform or anything like that the things that go viral is the trash we're from marking about like bro this is so bad in the right way that is i gotta share this jump yeah you know what i mean i got like rebecca back friday right it was perfect and it i don't even i don't it's almost good enough Right. And it's it's playing with that line where I got to share it because if it was like horrible and I can't listen to it. No one's going to even you're not going to even play it or share it. Right. I don't want nobody to know you listen to it. Yeah, exactly. You don't <laughs> want nobody. Well, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like like just say poorly mixed music. That's the best way to say trash without even necessarily having to get into a, the subjective idea. It's like this is hard to literally listen to. Yeah. No one's really talking about that stuff. Right. Only reason you would talk about that is if somebody who recorded it was somebody worth talking about, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, the rock song was like, just what? What is this, bro? So now you go share it and talk about it. 
but most bad music doesn't get talk, um, talked about. So it's like either the top of what I call good music mountain, right? <laughs> or the top of the trash can. Those are the things, right? That get the attention. Everything below that, I don't know, man. So I get it. Your music might be good, but it's so much good music out here. All right. The the new way, the only the best way to make good music go viral <laughs> these days is almost like a bad way by somehow getting it branded as mid. Because people love to talk about how mid music is these days. Yeah. So if you can <laughs> if you can catch that, it's like we're not even saying it's trash. It's like it's just nothing mm-hmm. special. So if you can if, I mean nobody really wants their music to be branded that way. But that is the way that good music does get talked about these days. Yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, because good bad music stands out. Good, oh, regular good music does not stand out. It, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stand out, man. Yeah. So you just gotta understand human psychology, man. Like, what, what do, you, what do you, you, when you think about what you spend your time on, what you tell people about, what you share because it was funny, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, what does it come down to? What does it come down to? What you literally do? How much good music have you kept to yourself because it was just like good, right? But of course, the great music we know, we try to share that as much as possible. So, like that, <laughs> it, it's, it's such a complicated conversation that I feel like people don't really give much attention to in terms of what artists are going through today, in terms of the disrespect the genre is getting. But I think. On the flip side, artists need to take advantage of it. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, like hundred yeah, percent. Y'all are doing, y'all are missing the opportunity to take as much advantage of these other routes of creativity and monetization that others aren't. Right. So I have a a thought process. So you you're aware how like the black community is always like buy black, buy black, right? Mm-hmm. And we need to support our own. And have you ever heard any conversations where people are like, you need to build it almost only for black people? Yeah. It's like, this is ours, our own, and we don't serve anybody else that like that type of thing. And for me, you got to look at it holistically, right? It's just basic economics. If we only circulate within us at some point, right, there's diminishment. That happens, right? Things diminish because we don't have any new money coming in, especially if others are taken from our community. Mm-hmm. All right. So it's a barbell. There's two sides of it. One, economically, yes, we have our own and we maximize how much we circulate within our community. Great and do for ourselves. But you can't be mad at these other people who are not building specifically for black. What you want to really track is what they do after they get the money. Yeah. All right. So let them get everybody. Like, I, other uh, everybody else is getting everybody else money. Let us go get everybody else money, and then bring it back to the community. Then we have those people who just want to stay within, but you, we need to have the full spectrum for the pot to grow. Otherwise, if we're just circulating within us, it doesn't move. Right? It doesn't grow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So makes sense. That's the whole way I look at it. And in that example, artists are the black people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Artist, all right, cool. Do your artist stuff, your monetization stuff, but you gotta expand, all right, into these other categories. Yeah, so many Take bags. that money and then apply it back to funding your music career. Apply it back to whatever your lifestyle and maintenance is as an artist, so you can continue to pursue your dream. Otherwise, if other people are taking from the community, right, while you're staying in your community, your pot is only getting smaller while there's growth so that's the game you got to have both a great example is the, this dude named trevor jackson i think that's his name it's, it's confusing because there's a white one and a black one but the guy who's on gr- not groupish grownish oh, okay yeah yeah, right? yeah he talks about like doing acting pretty much really just to fund his music and he has a respectable music career by the way let me see how many spotify followers he has real quick or uh, monthly listeners. Real, real quick. All right, so he has 303,000 monthly listeners, right? That's a very oh, respectable yeah, that's number. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, he had a viral moment on TikTok recently, too. 
Oh yeah, because he did a remix of um some song. Yeah. Ah, uh, whose song was that to hear? Oh, oh the Poland. Poland. Yeah, Poland, yeah, yeah, Poland. yeah bro. Y'all yeah, these strikes again, bro. Yep. Our king is back. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Our king is back. <laughs> hey, the king, man. You won me over. You might win me over. <laughs> you got me for the day. <laughs> um <laughs> Trevor Jackson, though, yeah, he had 303 monthly listeners, and he's funding his music career, right, mm-hmm. as an actor. Mm-hmm. Built the brand as an actor. Built the brand, made that connection. In the same way Will Smith went from music to acting, that you can go from acting to music, right? I think the problem that you don't see a lot of people, you don't see, the reason you don't see a lot of people do it is because music's so much harder I think to monetize than yeah. acting. The fans are more right? segmented. No right. infrastructure, real infrastructure. Yeah. Unless you get to the top. I don't want to start no arguments, <laughs> actors. And you know, you like feel free to school me a little bit, but I'm, I'm making a blanket statement. I get it, but let's look at it this way: you can get an acting job and make a, a decent amount of money, even when you're not like a big known name. Right? There's like levels to make money on the way up. Yeah. Artists is very hard. It's to make much at all, like anything, if you don't really have a name. Like it doesn't have to be the biggest name, but it's all it's almost like the chasm is like zero to sixty, right? Then you know, 70, 80, 100, where acting and many other um careers have like a zero, 10, 20, 10, 20 yeah. like they have a, a path to make money on the way up. So if you're already big and you're making money and then you have the way the music industry works. It's just like, why do I even want to put my energy into that? Maybe I just might make something for fun. That's the big one. Yeah, but like, why yeah, do that's... I want to like do this and, and go that route? Yeah. Like, they get in that shit and be like, oh, this what y'all doing over here? Yeah. Oh, no, let me go back. Let like, me go back to where I came y'all from. Make it too hard to make the money. Like, it's, it's just too much, right? So I, I definitely think that's a part of it. But artists, uh, there's so many ways, right? So much money in these other fields and spaces and places, even within music, right? To focus on sync deals, right? Mm-hmm. Versus just building your fan base that one specific way. There's so many ways, man. Um, like we, of course we got the stories of, ah, oh, dang, your name's not coming to me right now, bro. My bad. Oh, Cash Mace. Cash Mace getting his 100K plus writing a song for Spanx, mm-hmm. all right? DMing the CEO, first of all, which shout out to Sarah Blakely. I think she exited for probably like, more than more than five billion, I'm pretty sure, selling Spanx, right? Um, and then who else did something like that? There was somebody else who wrote a sync deal that I know for some serious money. Yeah, I know Vince talked a lot about uh he got more money, I think he said, from the GTA placement of his music than he's gotten from a lot of his music industry stuff. Hey, who said that? Vince Staples. See. He was in the last GTA. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. So there's so many other ways that you can look to to make the music work at least do that right at least do that do both do both for sure <laughs> like like no every artist that's winning big is doing both yeah, yeah. right like yeah we know that jay-z beyonce and you know those usual actors for sure have money and and their their music can do whatever they got real fans but hey, rihanna is in this new movie, right? What, what movie is that? Oh, don't, even, don't even make it's me. It's that slow song yeah. that, that came out and don't. they say she's going to drop another one coming up soon. Yeah, don't do it to me. But yeah, like, that's the same deal, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? And it, everybody is going to get that extra cash. Yeah. It doesn't make sense not to, right? It's just artists, many of y'all, y'all might not, y'all might not find that level of success and find even more money just going straight to the other route. Yeah, it's like sometimes the music is just an entry point into the thing that's going to really make you a lot of money, you know. And I think while we see it with bigger artists have gotten the opportunity to go through enough stuff that they realize that. Smaller artists haven't gotten to go through it yet, so they don't believe that until they get into it. They're like, damn, y'all weren't lying. This shit is not what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Let me go sell socks. It's like, yeah, bro, you've been selling socks from the jump, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Hey. Claire Black said it, bro. I made a million off socks. I believe him. He said that? He said it in one of his songs. 
Some some running the bus. I made a million off socks. He did say that. Yeah. He did. Say, I guess I just assumed that that was not socks he was talking about, and I just didn't know he was talking about. But maybe he was. You right. You might be right. Yeah, but I believe him. He probably did just straight up shit. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, man, the money is out there. It's so many ways to get it. Even we just literally this is the whole conversation because we just talked about the experiences. The experiences, right? There's so many ways to brand it. Look at yourself as brand a brand. Look at yourself as intellectual property, and look to build intellectual property with your intellectual property because that's the thing that can, becomes easy to monetize. You can sell that itself. So then, like, okay, now I don't own. Like, let's just say Adventure ATL, right? At one point, I was like, well, shoot, we could just sell Adventure ATL, the festival concept, the name, and then have nothing to do with it because we were going, we were targeting a very specific audience and how it was being built, right? That's yeah. the way I was seeing it. So, and build the clout and energy in that space. And just like, oh, it could be on cups, it could be on pencils, it could be on clothes, it could be in different experiences and spaces without me even having to do that work. But yeah. how many... Uh, they don't do what's his name uh, anymore. Wood, 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 wood. Damn, wood, wood. bro. The, the festival is an old ass festival, OG festival, a hippie dippy festival. What was called Burning Burning Man? You talking nah, about Burning no? let's just say Burning Man. Dang, it almost came to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna find out there real quick. But um, I know Carlos Santana was there. Stockwood is that what it's called? Something wood. Would dang whatever anyway if burning man stopped having a festival burning man as a brand could still move on keep going yeah 100 percent. Right? like literally people going to, are going to have t-shirts right yeah that simple all right it's a thing that continue to be can be so so we should have like a, a deeper conversation on intellectual property and ideas and and how that's going to be very very different in this content uh space and era but you know, we got to close out for today. Corey got to go make some money, which, which I'm always a proponent for. So, <laughs> so, he, so he threw it, y'all. But <laughs> just this time, just this time, I'll be back. <laughs> but, but, we, we, <laughs> but we appreciate y'all. Oh, I did not mention at the beginning. All right, so hopefully you're still here in the end. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Come see us. That's when we're dropping these episodes. Uh, Y'all have a great Thanksgiving week. Travel, safe, uh, safe travels, safe eating. Don't eat too much. You know what I mean? Don't put on too much pounds uh, and don't get no, uh, what is it? Diabetes. I don't know. That's why it came to me. But but other than that, bro, this is no labels necessary. I'm Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.